Hi again, now I'm going to teach you how to retouch faces using surface blur retouch. This will create dull skin impression. So I'm going to open up the file with Carmen Electra. This is very typical for magazines that you don't, you can't really believe what you see because the pictures have been retouched so the person looks 20 years younger. I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, we're going to make a copy of our original layer by being located on that layer, holding down command and then clicking J as John. That will create a copy of that layer. If you don't know shortcuts, you can always just right click the layer and choose duplicate layer. That's perfect. Um, okay, so I'm going to go to my copy of that layer. I'm going to choose from filter blur and I'll choose surface blur. Okay, so here what we're looking for is actually changing the radius and threshold values so, so her skin looks like there's no wrinkles at all. We don't want to over exaggerate it because then it makes her skin look like she's a cartoon or it makes her skin look too blurry. Uh, so we are aiming at getting some kind of look that is close to reality but with much less wrinkles. So perhaps this would be the values I'm looking for, perhaps a radius of around 30 and a threshold of around 15. That's what I'm going for. I'm going to click OK. Um, and notice this only affects the copy of the layer. It does not affect the original. So what we actually did was we blurred the skin, which makes the wrinkles disappear. But we also blurred every other part of the person, making her hair become blurry, making her eyes become blurry, making her lips become blurry, and so on. And we only wanted to affect the skin. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a simple task using the eraser tool. And here we'll select the eraser tool. I'm going to switch my opacity to being around 50%. I'm going to right click to choose a bigger brush. Um, and I'm going to start erasing her hair. And you'll notice that her hair becomes more apparent when I'm erasing in this area. To be able to see what we're actually doing, I'm going to switch off the visibility of my background layer so you can actually see what you are deleting. And you can see as I move through this area, we actually delete um, the top layer. And I'm just going to delete all the way to the edge of the hair. And if your brush looks different than mine, perhaps your hardness is different than mine. I'm actually using a hardness which is way too high, 100%. I'll probably go with 90% instead because that's good to hard edges uh, and it will create a more realistic look than 100% hardness. So we'll just keep on doing this, removing her hair, because removing the hair actually from this layer just means that it removes the blurriness which the filter created. Mm -hmm. So we're moving all parts. I'll just zoom out so we can make sure that everything is revealed. So we see the entire picture. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Ba -ba -dum. You're allowed to sing while doing this. It's not an offense. Just do it. Do what feels right. And I'm moving down to the last parts of her hair. When having completed the hair, the next thing you'll do is you'll do the same thing to the eyes. Actually, just think of her eyes as being a hole in her face because you don't want any blurriness to the eyes. So I'm just trying to remove everything inside of the eye region. It makes a sinister image. Uh, and likewise her brow, you don't want her br brow to be blurry. I'll pr probably switch the hardness down in this area because it's hair against skin. 
So I'm going to set a hardness of 50 to 70 percent. That's also again by right clicking to change size and hardness. Right now it looks like something from a horror movie. I'm going to do the same thing to her lips because we don't want the highlights on her lips to be blurry. We want her lips to be very sharp and in focus. Same to the tip of her nose, the edge of her nose. Don't make that blurry, so make sure that it's erased the contour in those regions. And I think that looks nice. It's excellent. You did it. <laughs> okay. So the next part you want to do is actually just switch on the visibility of the background layer. And we'll see what we did. You see now her hair is very sharp, in focus. Her eyes are sharp and in focus and so on. One thing you could do, which is going to be a bit tougher, is actually uh, her eyelashes. If you want those to be less blurry, if they seem blurry, you could also switch off the background layer, start using your eraser with a very small sized brush, 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 <laughs> and uh, simply just try erasing uh, from these eyelashes. I'm not going to be that thorough on my picture, but you could be doing this as well if you just want to be sure that everything is 100% sharp. So you get that really awesome doll face picture. Okay, so let's say this is fine. I'm going to zoom out and then perhaps some of you will think this is too much. Well, then you can just adjust the opacity of the layer which is on top. I could adjust the layer on top right here. So switch down the opacity and you'll notice that her wrinkles starts appearing again. Her skin texture starts appearing again and so on. So that's just by adjusting the opacity. Cool. Next thing we'll do is we'll lighten up some parts of her face as well. Because I don't know if you noticed, but the original actually has more highlights than the blurred version, the surface blurred version. So let's just create some new highlights so we make sure that her face hasn't lost any kind of depth. To do so, I'm gonna make a new layer out of these two layers. This way I'm going to preserve both layers in case anything go wrong. So I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to make a new layer, right? That's just by clicking create new layer. Then I'm going to go to image and I'm going to click apply image, then OK. This will create a new layer that has flattened both of these two layers into being one layer. So. These two layers are actually not visible because the top layer is hiding both of them. But I promise you, this is a blurred version. This is the surface blur version. This is just these two made into one. Um, yeah, okay. So next thing I'll do is on this new layer up here, I could actually um, just rename it surface blur version. Um, and on top of this, I'll choose to use Dutch tool, Dutch tool to brighten up some areas. I'll set my size higher. When using Dutch tool, it's a good idea in general to use a high size unless you're like changing highlights inside of an iris or a pupil. But if it's skin in general, use a big brush. Uh, otherwise, it will look unnatural. Set it to mid-tones because skin tones are typically mid-tones. Um, and set the exposure to 4 or 5%. Okay, so now go through the parts with the brush by holding down your mouse button. Have, keep it 
held down, you know, don't release the button, just move through the face um, with your mouse button down. Over the areas of the faces where highlights would be most visible. Uh, so that would be the nose tip, that would be just above the brow, that would be the cheek, and that would be the chin. That would be, and also actually the shoulder, but I'm not going to put more highlights in that area. So I'm going to put, put some highlights here. And, you know, you'll probably not notice anything in the start. Uh, you'll be wondering, is anything even happening? Does anything happen in these regions of the picture? And, and perhaps you'll be uncertain about that. So let's just see if anything has actually happened to this picture. You can see that by going to history and just clicking one step back and you'll notice that she is much brighter in her face right now than she was before. Likewise, if you want to darken some regions, you could go switch to uh, burn tool and then simply choose to be in mid tones instead of shadows. If you want the darker tones to become even darker. And I'll just choose a bigger brush and you can just darken those tones up if you want them to. But in this picture, it would be more natural to use Dutch tool just to brighten up the pointed areas, the highlighted areas, so they become even more apparent. You could do that as well inside of the eye. If you want to do that inside of the eye, you would choose highlights because that's areas that are already very bright. You can make them even brighter. Uh, by simply just using highlights, exposure set to 4 to 5% with Dutch tool. And that way we make her eye stand out a bit more. And we could do that with the highlights on the lips as well. So that's one way of, um, you know, making the person look more like she's a doll. You could exaggerate this even more. Um, I choose mine to be a bit more realistic by setting the opacity to 50% down here on the surface blur layer, but it could have been set to 100% instead, so the skin had less wrinkles. But this is how you do surface blur retouch, and afterwards how you use Dutch tool to brighten up some areas in the face. Have a great day.